Okay, I'm upset. Bottom line, I'm upset and I had to start the episode off this way because this was the first story that jumped out at me that, nah, we gotta talk about this because this is a very, very big thing in the community of people that feel like they can talk any which way, act any which way, interact with any creators or anybody, but in particular, some of these authors because y'all know, if you followed my show at all these years, then you know that I have nothing but the utmost respect for these mangaka that that break their backs, their hearts, their bodies. They destroy themselves for our entertainment. If you don't know, the life of a mangaka is not all easy street. It's not just, hey, I draw a drawing and I'm a millionaire. It's nothing even remotely close to that. The creator of One Piece, Eichiro Oda, for example, in case you don't know, he works 20 to 21 hours a day every freaking day, okay? You, you don't know what that's like. You don't know what it's like to work 20 to 21 hours a day hunched over on a desk and there's millions and millions of people, giant conglomerates and corporations that are depending on your ability to make something interesting, entertaining, exciting, revolutionary, all on this piece of paper, right? That's a very big deal. So when I see scumbags, and I'm going to say yes, people, scum bags that decide that they could talk any which way to a creator i'm gonna call you out fam this is it i'm gonna call you out now i know probably some people are gonna think oh well i'm gonna start doing this more often like nah if it's genuine i'm gonna call you out let's be clear i'm not gonna feed the trolls neither but i saw this one and the fact that the mangaka interacted right now in case you don't know what i'm talking about because i know i went on a tangent i'm just so upset right now okay quickly definitely want to make sure you hit that subscribe and bell button before anything else so you get notified and all of that good stuff stay tapped in with this channel and what we got going on here i inform you on everything and anything on the anime and manga world just saying hit him no matter how you know, get it done 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 over on twitter a few days ago the author of hajime no ippo was disrespected immensely by hunter hunter fans and it's not just like oh somebody with a hunter hunter av what they said in particular was outright disrespectful because i'm sure yeah people are excited to gosh she's coming back hunter hunter i'm extremely excited i'm ecstatic right now i ain't gonna lie this is what's making the anime and manga scene kind of exciting for me right now the fact that togashi is returning this is like a, a god of the pen you know what i'm saying so i get being excited absolutely but when you become a scumbag and decide to disrespect Another author because you're excited or you love an author. Nah, fam, that's clown shoes. That's clown stuff. And we got to call it out because right here, what happened is as follows. Some dude that while his username is above one average, we're going to say you're definitely below below average. You're the bottom of the barrel. Like average looks down at you and laughs. Okay. And you're probably like, yo, for you're being a little cruel. Like, what did he do? Well, he decided to on May 30th at 1.59 a.m. According to where I was when I took the screen screenshot Tagashi is better than you in a reply to a unrelated post that the author of Hajime no Ippo George Morikawa was writing like George Morikawa you know he's very active on Twitter he loves to write about different things sometimes I'll be popping into his sessions that he'll have like a Twitter space or whatever like he's a really awesome dude like how can you not respect the man that created Hajime no Ippo so you know he's minding his own business this jackass this dumbass decided hey Tagashi is better than you Tagashi's a great guy whatever but the thing that really made me feel a certain way is because I know what it's like right I've been through certain situations like this where let's just say George Morikawa reading that what is he ideally supposed to say right if he responds in any other fashion other than being very extremely humble he looks bad if he was to tell him right now go eat a dick oh well that was uncalled for I think he went a little excessive if he was to tell him something like yo nah I'm, I'm just as great as Tagashi or I'm better than Tagashi then of course that's absolutely disrespectful yada yada so he is in a between a rock and a hard place like right now if somebody commented on my channel for example like X Y and Z creator is better than you or automatically it's gonna make me think like damn so if i respond in any which way this is how they're gonna react if i respond that way this is how they're gonna react so george morikawa's response is i know it well basically having to be humble and saying i know he's better than me and at the end of the day george morikawa has been doing hajime no ippo pretty much longer than tagashi he's an amazing artist he has made and inspired so many people for so many different reasons he's a legend too and you know not to be corny and, and quote cold you know whatnot but they act like two legends cannot coexist these are two 
literal legends, straight up absolutely legends, legendary. He had to say, I know it well, because if he says anything else, either in Japan, they're going to look at a certain way, worldwide, they're going to look at a certain way. Like, sure, he probably could have got maybe some internet brownie points of being like, yo, kiss my ass. You know what I'm saying? Suck my left nut, whatever. He could have said something really, really foul. But in Japan, they're going to look at him like, ooh, that was uncalled for, despite the fact that, no, it's completely called for. And shout outs to this dude, Defar, on Twitter. Like, yo, really, really awesome dude. He just had to reply in honor of George Morikawa. It's the first reply I see is, shut the fuck up. And straight up, yo, I, I, I'm looking at the camera right now. You, Mr. Below Average, I want to tell you that was wrong. Like, I could really go in right now, but I just want to say that was wrong. And anybody that is thinking of doing something like that, just imagine if the shoe was on the other foot. If you was that guy, if you work your ass off, if you put 20 hours, 13, and whatever the fuck, every single day of your life. If you did all of that, and for some little ass wipe to come out of nowhere and say, yo, <laughs> Greg over there is better than you. Like, yo, T Tagashi, probably, realistically, if not my favorite, definitely one of my favorite manga of all time, Yu Yu Hakusho. show. It inspired the name for Neverworld for crying out all of that good stuff. That is no excuse to be an asshole. Shout out to George Morikawa for keeping it together because it shows what type of person you are when you're under a little bit of scrutiny, whatever the case may be, how you react. And he reacted like a stand-up guy. I know it well. Shout outs to you. You're a legend too. You and Tagashi are awesome. This dude right here though, you corny, you a clown and just bozo status. We're going to give him, as a matter of fact, we're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. I used to do the segment called the crusty of the week award homeboy below average you are the crusty of the week chris right here put his little avi and put like some little effects like boo like an award you are the crusty of the week you piece of shit oh i said i wasn't gonna go in but mm, yeah passionate rant in the beginning of forever news let's get to the next story lads and you know what let's calm it down a little bit with the top 50 best-selling manga of the week courtesy of jose underscore k and looking at 50 through 41, off rip, not many, you know, notable mentions, to be honest with you. Like, although I'm like, what the hell? Volume 47, what is that? First of all, I think that's Yaoi. Pause like a motherfucker, but the name, like to be able to get away with a name like that. I I I don't even want to pronounce this. I'm just gonna say the number 47, uh Tatsumi to Inui. Like what I think we're gonna just mosey on over to 40 through 31 because that was just a bit much. And uh yeah. 38, Tokyo Avengers Volume 27, 17,852. Still bringing in the numbers. I'm just really, really interested to see will it hit a mill before it leaves or not. Uh Fortnite of the Apocalypse Volume 7, 17,060. 9,000 total in 13 days. That is really, really good in my opinion for the Four Nights of the Apocalypse. I, I don't know. Uh, in case you missed it, I highly recommend go watch the recent video I did on the Seven Deadly Sins author Nakaba Suzuki. I feel almost obliged to support damn near everything he does right now because if you understand this man's hard work and his come up and all of the shit that he went through, the living hell for 16 cancellations, 16 cancellations, one more time, 16 cancellations, you would be a fan of his too and you would rock with him. So shout out to him. I hope he does another 200, 300,000 on this volume alone. Then number 33, One Punch Man, volume 25, 19,317,000 total. Yo, the One Punch Man controversy lately. Some people are saying it's the greatest shit. It's awesome. It's amazing. Some people are saying that it went off the rails. The webcomic was just so much better. It, le it lost its soul. We'll, we'll see, I guess. Like, I don't know. It's kind of a toss up there. Then uh, number 31, Jujutsu Kaisen, volume 19, 20,000, 1.629. Jujutsu Kaisen continuing to power through. Then we got places 30 through 21 at number 27 chojin x volume 3 22,000 bringing in total 66,000 if i'm not mistaken lads yes it is 66,000 then we got jumping all the way up to fire force again the final volume uh in 13 days it broke 100,000 103 very well done again shout outs to atsushi okubo man it's gonna be so sad when i'm finally not talking or well, not finally but when i'm actually not talking about him anymore because it's almost that time with the final volume being released then moving over places 20 through 11 at number 20 my hero academia volume 34 30,000 again 609 in total i just can't stress how much i love this cover and interestingly enough i heard that in one of the recent chapters there was mentions once again of this character i wonder if they line things up to have like mentions of what's going to be on the cover in the latest chapters to kind of cross promote that would make a lot of sense and then y'all already know the drill because of the anime is exploding we got spy family volume 2 volume 3 volume 1 all placing 19 18 and 16 then we got blue lock volume 19 at uh, number 15 with 33,124. Blue Lock, that's definitely... Once I get in the mojo thing, because realistically, I've been saying this a lot for like months now. I'm gonna catch up. I'm gonna get into this. I'm gonna get into that. 
that. No, 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 no. I'm going to stop saying that. And y'all just going to see because that's another sports one that I really want to get into. Like, it just sounds good from what people are telling me. So, yeah. Other than Spy Family wrapping up at number 11, Volume 4. Yet again, 39,000. That Spy Family anime is doing wonders. Then we got Top 10, Top 10, Top 10. And just a lot more Spy Family. Well, for starters, 10, Uma Musume, which I think wasn't in number 1 last week. But now it's at number 10, 40,000, 172,000 total. Then we got Spy Family 9, 8, 7, 6, All Spy Family Volumes. Then I am very happy to say we got a new Villain Saga Volume, Volume 26. That cover looks very interesting. Uh, with almost 50,000, pretty much in total in 7 days, 50,000. Man, you don't understand. I don't care what anyone says. Farm this, farm that. Fuck your farms. I can't wait for Vinland Saga to return, baby. Oh! I'm referring to the anime, of course. I don't care what it is. I need more Thorfinn. I need more of that. Whatever it was, I need more of it. Then top three, once again, Spy Family, latest volume, volume 9, with 50,000, 1.2 million. Then number two, Blue Period, volume 12, 87,000. And then number one, a very shocking twist, but I'm not mad at it. Uh, Space Brothers, volume 41, 132,000. So this week, we got Space Brothers topping it, which you rarely see Space Brothers in. I don't even think I've ever seen and I might be misremembering. Somebody could probably pull it up, but I don't remember ever a Space Brothers volume coming in at number one. But again, I might be totally misremembering, or it could just be that it was a soft week and it had the opportunity to blow past the competition. But very, again, interesting top 50. I like when the top 50 isn't just the usual suspects. You know, My Hero, Black Clover, One Piece, yada, yada. Switch it up a little bit, and this was a fun one. And like I said, people, we may have started this episode off angry, but I got, again, some good news, some loving news, because, you know, Shonen Jump has been very rocky. Like, 2022, all of the new serializations, for the most part, been cancelled out the magazine. We got like what Doran Dororan that's still waiting in the wings to decide what's gonna happen. Whatever Ayashimon out of here, Koisuru One Piece out of here, Hunter's Guild Red Hood out of here, Niru Rise of the Martial Artist out of here, which oh, were they 2021? I don't remember. But either way, the last year or so of serializations has just been absolutely awful. But it seems like Shonen Jump may have found their next hit and it's ironic because it's with this sport Rakugo which is very like different of anything you've ever seen and I'm just kind of like wow this is fascinating like I was checking out shout out to Shonen Saito they said Shonen Jump is getting its first hit of 2022 and that's Akane Banashi if you still haven't given it a chance do it one of the best mangas in the roster right now and I ain't gonna lie the main character's design Mwah. Whoever the manga is, you know how to draw a really, really awesome character design for a main character female. I'm just looking at it right now like, yo, dog, fire. Absolutely fire. And you're probably thinking to yourself, yo, Fenev, so we're just supposed to go off this dude showing in Saito telling us that it's a hit. Like, do you have anything to back it up? Come on, dog. It's me. I'm him. I'm that dude. Because we got some Shoseki rankings, which is basically the rankings of the volumes that just came out recently. And in particular, this is the Shoseki Jump volumes that recently came out. And it gives you an idea of like hey okay this is how this is performing it doesn't give you the numbers we'll get the numbers probably by the end of the week for these volumes but it gives us in a little bit of insight into what's happening right here and for june 3rd the first day of shoseki counting right you got blue lock at number two very 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 good for that series like holy cow i'm kind of shocked to even say blue lock number two blue lock number two another sleeper it's coming it's a romance sports series if i'm not mistaken then number three sakamoto days my guy sakamoto again oh wow this is even more positive than i thought i was coming in I'm just like here to big up Akane Banashi, but okay, Blue Lock, Sakamoto Days, number four, Elusive Samurai. I don't know. Y y yo. Don't, don't lock down Yuki Kawaguchi too long if you know you know let let him live let him get his feet going I'm watching you uh you you say Matsui I'm looking at you and by the way yeah here's my eyes before people say yo uh why are you wearing shades in the daytime bro because I want to lad which watch at number eight whatevs but then this was the very pleasant shocker that shows that Shonen Jump got a new hit for starters I just I love this character's design absolutely amazing Akane Banashi coming in at number 11 in day one of the Shoseki rankings outdoing something that's been in the magazine for quite some time and forgive me if I'm wrong but I believe it's battle series Yozakura family like Akane Banashi day one outdid Yozakura family outdid me and Roboco that me and Roboco just got an anime some people are like eh whatever me and Roboco isn't a big seller outdid Magu-chan outdid Ayashimon Earth Child High School Family isn't High School Family still in the magazine or has it got cancelled yet I don't even know and Doron Dororong at number 77 volume 2 just absolutely 
absolutely horrible. And Shugo Maru 202. Yeah, they wiped their ass with Shugo Maru and threw that shit in the woods like a bear. Like, it, it was awful. But I say all that to say that Akane Banashi outsold multiple series that have been in the magazine for a while and have established fan bases. And it has a really, really awesome design for its MC. And I have no idea what the hell Rakugo is. But I'm very, very excited that, hey, it sounds good. People are telling me it's a good series. It's doing good. They won in the Shoseki rankings. It's outperforming other series that have been established already in the magazine. Like, I, I can't hate on it. Now, day two, a little bit of a different story. It, it dropped slightly in terms of now it's number 33 and a few of those other big dogs kind of just outranked it slightly but again that's massive fan bases that they should ideally have accumulated of being in the magazine so long this is volume one compared to like me and roboco what volume is that volume eight for me and roboco volume 13 for yozaku the family like these all series have been in the this is volume one and it's only slightly behind me and roboco and yozaku the family on day two day one it outdid them so imagine what it's going to be like as it continues to rise and again just mwah, i'm i'm gonna go read akanabanashi as soon as i turn this camera off and if i don't i probably are gonna do nothing but be sad about me lying here because i'm i want to read it will i read it find out next time on dragon ball for now bleach fans i got more good news for you bleach fans i got more positivity to pump through to your veins bruh because y'all already know thousand of blood wars coming in october so you're probably thinking like yo do they got anything ready like how far are they into you know production like this is a big deal thousand of blood war bleach people been waiting 10 years for this shit what's going on fam well according to re Recent leaks. Uh, it says here, Bleach anime voice recording has started. I believe there was some sort of leak out there that showed that like one of the cast members had like a script or something for the Thousand Blood War, which would make sense. Like, yo, dog, if we're now in June, as of the recording of this video, we're, we're a few months away, July, August, September, October. We're four months away from the big anime season that we've been waiting pretty much all freaking year for, where we're gonna have Bleach, Chainsaw Man, you name it, it's gonna be there. Hell's Paradise. I don't even know how I'm gonna be able to handle this. Like, yo, I I gotta ask right here please flood my comments with letting me know how do i handle creating content for all of those things like ooh, i got a few ideas look out for them but yeah people that means like right now they're doing voices so so that's a very good thing to hear because that means that they have footage already right it's like in japan it's not like america like america we for cartoons for example we record our voices they ship it overseas they animate around the voices and then boom however in japan they do it like a stage play they got the animation in front of them they got the actors with the scripts and they dub into their because in Japan, they never really were like fickle and they still to this point don't really care too much about exactly meeting the mouth flaps while over here in the US and the West and all around the world, a lot of people are like, nah, it better flap exactly. Even though even real world, like if you really pay attention to footage and shit like that, sometimes mouth flaps don't go exactly with even real people. So yeah, but I say all that to say that it's a good thing that if they doing this now, that means that they already have footage. That means that there's already episodes probably made, pre-production, post-production, all sorts of stuff. This is a good thing that they might have episodes done and ready to go opposed to like some tragedy productions where sometimes you know oftentimes actually not even sometimes they are handing in the episode as it's supposed to air it's like here you go hurry we, we, we made it and they're grabbing the tape and running and putting it in immediately into the tv for the world like uh, oftentimes that's the reality for a big anime production if they're doing this then it's safe to say that bleach is going to meet our expectations quality wise so i'm excited for it man it's been a long time coming shout out to taite kubo this is the the new era for kubo and Whatever comes from it, I'm looking forward to it. Not to mention, like, yo, dog, he also got Burn the Witch waiting in the wings. I almost feel like he's going to use Bleach as a launch pad to really blow up either a Bleach Z or Burn the Witch. Because he put Burn the Witch on pause for the moment, but it's a new IP, new contracts. Just so many good things for Bleach, Taite Kubo, and everybody that's into this whole verse. It's kind of crazy now that I think about it. Kubo is creating his own multiverse as well. Kind of like me, in case you don't know. I got the multiverse, the Fenever verse, anywhere from the new podcast I created with my bros to for never always wins the gaming channel for never the fuck i want to pickups and discussions videos uh for never news it's separate channel we got a lot going on so create your own universe if you want it then we got big news for dragon ball fans in particular if you're excited about the upcoming film the dragon ball super superhero film that has been all over the place at this point plastered well we got a release date for the west which is very interesting it's gonna pretty much uh well i, I got the date here and we also got new trailers it says here theater poster lists dragon ball super superhero film opening in the u.s on August 19. A theater poster for Dragon Ball Super Superhero is listing that the anime film will open
opened in the U.S. theaters on August 19th. Twitter user Trickle the TM posted a picture of the poster on Saturday. It was on display at the AMC Nashamini 24th Theater in Bensalem, Pennsylvania. But yeah, uh, just looking at it, holy cow, it, it, is it legit or are we being trolled? I don't know. Crunchyroll and Sony Pictures previously announced the film will screen in theaters worldwide this summer starting in August, but an exact date was still on the wraps. The summer screenings will include both the original Japanese audio with subtitles and with the dub. The company will distribute the film in all continents including North America, Latin America, Europe, Australia slash New Zealand, Africa, Al Kelbulan, the Middle East, and Asia, excluding Japan. Crunchyroll describes the film. We're not going to even go into that because also there's new trailers has been released that says Piccolo goes undercover in Dragon Ball Super Superhero Teaser. Yo, what is it? First, that terrible Matrix Resurrections film starts off with Morpheus being a freaking agent and having to break free. And now Piccolo is a cop too? What are we doing here, fam? If you know, you know. This is crazy. We're just a week away from the June 11th Japanese opening of Dragon Ball Super Superheroes anime film. So a new teaser is here to keep the hype train rolling. Like the last one, this is super brief, but we get some nice expressions cut of Piccolo in the short time we spent with him in disguise. And based on the new trailers, I've seen a lot of different stuff within the trailers. You got like a scene of Piccolo and Gohan in a room together. Now we got Piccolo is basically turning into 12. What happened, dog? You folded. Piccolo folded. Oh, no. Or maybe he just decided, you know what? I think I'm going to do the wrong thing, lad. Blue or red? Blue or red? Blue or red? You decide. Yeah, people, we, we go deep. If you know, you know. I'm going to keep on saying it. It is what it is. It's like there's two different shows as you're watching this right now. My Hero Academia fans, in case you don't know, they said a while ago, like, yo, no more movies. World Heroes Mission, that's going to be the end. Then all of a sudden, they were like, ah, scratch that. There was a leak. Ten years, ten movies. A movie every freaking year. And then this summer, they announced, like, oh, no no movies. They, they, they're not doing no movies. Then all of a sudden, like, oh, we're, we're, we're not doing movies because we're doing OVAs that just so happen to be airing in theaters so wait a minute you're putting some animation that is intended for theaters in theaters but they're not movies they're original video animation ching ching sugoi that's got those you know Boku no Hero Academia, My Hero Academia's original net anime reveals two key visuals for the second episode, two episode special anime pre-screens in theaters from June 16th to June 19th and will stream online this summer afterwards. So they're doing a little bit of an exclusive, I guess, release for this one where it's like, hey, it's not exactly that we're going into theaters per se or whatever because it's going to be a limited run. But ultimately, it's probably contractually that whole thing of 10 years, 10 movies that they have to meet some type of quota and that's probably what it is they probably realize like fans are sick to death of you ruining the experience of the tv anime in favor of films not to mention that this is supposed to be the best season of my hero academia coming up so they're like we'll just do this little thing so we can meet our contractual obligations of putting something in theaters but bro it's not movie time right now it's anime time it's tv anime time because this could make a break like if this blows up this could turn into like the marine ford of my hero and then all of a sudden my hero could go into its you know time skip it's new world so to speak like one piece if it doesn't then horikoshi will probably be cemented in ending the manga assuming that he's not cemented in it already because there's still that possibility that he's looking at it as yo a time skip will change everything maybe he would want to we gotta wait and see all we know that he's trying to reach a conclusion by the end of this year early next year it could mean that he's trying to reach a conclusion for this portion and we're gonna get again my hero academia 2 with deku being the new all might and, and passing on one for all and also some quick but unfortunate updates for the manga my hero academia Academia will be on break weekly Shonen Jump issue number 28. Series resumes in issue number 29 as scheduled. So if you was into this week's or latest stuff with My Hero, unfortunately, there's no chapter the following issue, which I know a lot of people are like, yo, Fanem, where's the reviews? What's going on? If in case you missed it, when Black Clover returns, you guys will get a whole new way of experiencing manga reviews or somebody talking about manga chapters per se. Until then, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it, fam. I will. Just want to give a quick nod to Wit Studio because Wit Studio Studio, the people that did the first three seasons of Attack on Titan, they're co-producing Spy Family, they did Vinland Saga, well season one, season two now is with Mappa, but a uh, Wit Studios 10th anniversary exhibition will be held, it's called Wit Studio 10th Aim Higher, and they want to make better animation with everyone who supports them, that's Tetsuya Nakatake, which I want to say he's one of the big animators there, and just this poster is really awesome, it got some of the big iconic characters from Studio Wit, including the main character of Ranking of Kings, Boji, you got Anya from Spy Family, you got quite a few little uh, gems in here, but 
yeah, shout out to Wit Studio. They've done a lot of really awesome work over the years. It's sad that they can't include like Attack on Titan or anything anymore because Mappa is just like robbing the industry of all of the talent and all the great stuff. Although I'm not trying to say that those aren't great because Ranking of Kings, psh, I've been like all week thinking about Ranking of Kings and I finished that shit months ago. And before we wrap up, I wanted to say that there is definitely some drama, miscommunication, something there with the artist of Dr. Stone because in case you don't know, Dr. Stone's artist Boichi, he did Dr. Stone with his co-creator Richiro Inagaki and they finished Dr. Stone before that he had his own series if I'm not mistaken was it Sun Ken Rock like you know he's been doing his thing from time to time Boichi and then recently he started a new manga in another publication and had to end it for sad reasons this was just fairly recently yet he's working on now another series but he just ended one for sad reasons could it very well be that the sad reasons was nah you want to leave Jump you want to leave Shueisha that's fine you're not going to our direct competitor Kodansha that's what you're not going to do we're going to hit you with a cease and desist and injunction whatever it takes to stop you because now all of a sudden Boichi he went from leaving Jump and going to a weekly shonen magazine and now he's with Webtoons Dr. Stone's Boichi launches new Webtoon series with Shin Angyo on Shi's Inwa Yun Line Digital Frontier announced on Friday that Boichi will launch a new Webtoon series with writer Inwa Yun Defense Devil Island Shin Angyo on on the Line Manga app in mid-2023. This art right here looks freaking amazing. The new work is titled Super String and is tied into Korean company YLab's Super String IP, which features characters from different YLab works in one universe. The IP focuses on manhwa, but also includes films, musicals, live action works, and games. The new webtoon will center on one young man's story of protecting his family and fighting alone. In the story, heroes from various dimensions come to Earth and fight a war. And it just kind of makes me think like, yo, so he left Jump or seemingly went to Kodansha had to cancel and I don't know is there beef there let me know okay people so I was in the middle of doing something totally unrelated I was recording some music and I was like oh my god hold on I just got this alert nah gotta turn off artist brain and come back to YouTube reporter brain because make sure you subscribe and hit that bell to get all notifications so I can notify you when One Piece returns this is huge this is humongous of course you can tell by the title that One Piece fans are not about to be happy not that they've been recently from what I hear I hear like the manga hasn't been the most satisfying fine for a lot of people i don't know i'm gonna eventually catch up and talk about it which this is probably the best opportunity for me to talk about it because breaking news people according to Eichiro oda in the latest issue of weekly shonen jump but i also think this isn't a leak i think this has been already officially revealed one piece will be on break between jump issues 30 through 33 which is essentially one month a full month of no one piece manga due to the preparations for the upcoming arc a trip to the u.s for netflix's tv drama and film Red. Later, Oda gave up to the trip due to COVID-19 spreading. Oda's drawing for Red and Uta's VA will be out tomorrow so essentially no one piece for a month a lot of it is probably due to preparations for that live action which i've seen they've been doing a lot more cast announcements and they had like a whole bunch of stuff but i don't really know a lot of people the, the streets are saying that they're not <laughs> too enthusiastic about that one piece live action but either way that is kind of crazy because like live action stuff is happening they're gonna take a month off of the manga i think maybe there's a little bit more to it because notice how black clover just took this three month hiatus that we're still in the middle of jujutsu kaisen not that long ago had a pretty decent hiatus and now one piece is taking a month off what the heck is going on in shonen jump it's almost as if like the freaking magazine and the publishing company is burning or some shit like honestly since i've been doing this besides when series are going into their final arc like bleach and naruto in particular bleach i remember there was like a few months off that kubo took for the most part manga rarely take long stretches of breaks because it pretty much breaks the routine that the readers have and will cost readers so it's going to be very interesting to see how oda brings everyone back in with the next chapter back i'd imagine it's not that difficult for an ip as big as one piece considering the fact that all you need is like one huge viral moment for people to be like oh my god one piece is back like you know the very next chapter he shows and all of a sudden boom look asabo or boom or whatever the heck's going on in the manga right now that'll be a way to get people to come in but yeah a huge huge breaking story as of right now one piece going on a full month break from issues 30 through 33 and i, I just feel like that's such a dirty trade-off like really for the for, for the live action like yo i'm cool with with film red Oda working on film red and all that stuff absolutely and stuff but for the live action i think maybe the best thing out of all of this is that Oda gets the break that's what i'm happy for that Oda is getting a nice month break i mean he's going to be working on stuff on film red but it's probably more so just going to be a nice break for Oda and 
he deserves it this dude goes freaking heavy and hardcore with this stuff but yeah one piece fans i am dying to know how y'all feeling right now considering like i'm not caught up so i can't really say like is this a good time for oda to go and you know with one piece for a month off is this terrible like things aren't going right as it is and what is oda doing how do you feel about this do you feel like it also makes it feel more end game like the fact that hey we're having a you know big break like this which is damn near unheard of with one piece you know oda will take a week sometimes it'll be golden week so it'll be two but a full month with no one piece things is about to get spicy as we move forward into this next generation of shonen jump and i'm looking forward to experiencing it with all of you guys <laughs> berserk is returning dog what definitely hit that subscribe and that bell so you don't miss out because i'm gonna update you guys as soon as it comes out i thought this would never happen i thought we would never see the day i thought it was done -zo. i thought it was kaputs for the berserk series but fam what this is about to do between the fandom is about to be split i'm sure between everybody going crazy happy sad uh, in between like this is about to be absolutely nuts because yo dog what just happened one piece is going on a month break black clover went on a three month break and berserk is returning people but nani sore in case you don't know i want to say a year or two around this time maybe it was like may of 2021 that we found out that we lost the late great kentaro miura the author of the legendary iconic godlike one of the greatest pieces of literature out there berserk it's a freaking amazing series you know it's one of the greatest out there and we lost the author um you know he was dealing with health issues for a long time i believe it was due to his heart terrible situation and a lot of us thought you know it might be over they released that final chapter that he was working on and you know there was tears all around but uh, according to this big announcement seemingly berserk is returning it says here berserk by kentaro miura will resume in the upcoming young animal issue 13 out 2022 june 24th and art will be by studio gaga those are the people that pretty much were doing the art for the i, I want to say it was the other series that kentaro miura was working on they were pretty much like in charge of all of that stuff they were getting down his art style and whatnot and then the supervisor will be koji mori he's a mangaka and from the next issue they'll be focusing on first publishing six chapters until the end of the fantasia arc slash elf island chapter after this they'll be starting a new arc this is absolutely freaking nuts dog berserk is actually coming back i gotta i have to absolutely ask it would not be me if i didn't ask you guys right now how do you feel about this do you think that this is the smart move do you think they should have just left it alone because now we don't have like there's a valid point that's going to be had of maybe they should have just left it alone because kentaro miura is not around now granted i'm sure kentaro miura because he was dealing with these health issues for a while and because this was his life's work you know he worked on this manga for however many years 30 years something crazy you know he was going for a very long time 40 years something wild i don't even remember it was like in the 80s i think berserk started and i'm sure he would have left a blueprint behind but is that enough considering the fact that like you know for example not that they're the same by any means but like dragon ball a lot of people say that dragon ball super because it's really just toriyama handing in drafts from time to time that it's not the greatest thing in the world and people don't like it the same could happen with berserk so i'm definitely very interested in you guys' opinions on this are you for it yay nay you think they're going to be able to get it down honestly i'm going to walk into it expecting exactly what to expect of hey the art style isn't going to be exactly the same hey you're going to see noticeable differences it's not going to be like kentaro mira like kentaro mira is gone like you know the creator of berserk has passed away now so don't expect to get exactly berserk but if they can at the very least nail it if we know for sure that kentaro mira left behind this blueprint that they're now producing i'm going to try my best to be open-minded simply because i do want to see it and i do want to see a proper conclusion where either somebody gets their revenge something like we need answers it's been a long time and it's so freaking bizarre to me that literally yesterday i was thinking to myself i wonder if berserk is ever gonna end man so is it really over you know i was literally having this thought to myself and then boom asking you shall receive june 24th berserk returning with studio gaga at the helm alongside koji mori this mangaka i don't i don't even know I, a part of me feels excited a part of me is worried we gotta wait and see we gotta start off get the negativity out the way first so we could prosper with the rest of this video because we got a lot of huge insane news but in particular some negativity now in case you ain't hear about it it was a few days ago that it was announced that one piece's manga will be going on a break it will be going on a massive break for the series considering the fact that usually at most it's one week two weeks or whatnot but this one announced that it's going on a full month's break after i want to say if not next chapter the following chapter for many different reasons they kind of added a whole bunch of different things like first it was so oda could do something but then he didn't want to go because of covid so it was a million reasons why oda 
ultimately they announce this thing but i personally think for starters that potentially there's some marketing games behind it of hey uh what would happen if we was to take one piece and make it a monthly manga now i know a lot of people are like oh why would they ever do that because it makes it more impactful just imagine with one piece right now one piece manga pretty much trends every freaking week whenever a chapter drops now imagine you take that fandom that is hungry so badly every freaking week for a manga and they make it a monthly event once a month you get to nerd out for 40 to 50 pages of one piece that would be a big deal now is that gonna happen who the hell knows not something that's been hinted or whatnot but definitely feels like there's some games being played but then we got this big announcement that is like oh god it's finally that day naysayers have been saying it's not gonna happen but yeah one piece is ending one piece is ending ending people holy cow never thought i'd freaking see the day but i'm here to tell you guys that hr oro's manga's days are officially numbered one piece manga confirms entrance into the final act earlier this week the official one piece twitter account revealed that hr oro's epic tale will be taking a one month break from june 27th to july 25th today the account confirmed that one piece will be sailing into its final act when it returns oda created a poster for the announcement with the words to the final chapter on it and it's a silhouette of luffy putting on the straw hat with some red text under it and it says back in august 2020 in an interview with japanese mega band arashi oda revealed one piece had only four or five years left with the finale solidified in september 2021 an advertisement for the series quoted oda saying that the story is in its final stage earlier this week oda stated that he needed four weeks to steady his breath as he works on the final act of the one piece voyage and off rip you gotta look at it like yo it, what like i'm gonna ask you off rip how many years do you think we got left now now that that's been solidified considering it's been four or five more years for like at least eight or nine years how many more years do you think we're gonna have left with this i'm gonna say right here i think there's a possibility that it could be done in three and i know you're probably thinking like fanev you bugging out you no, no 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 you gotta stop this right now well for starters honestly let's think about it like wano just wrapped up right so boom we got wano out the way what's been left that's been set up there's still you know the war there's still vegapunk there's still elbaf and whatnot and what if oda decided okay so this is the final chapter this is the final act in terms of everything moving forward is going to be one thing after another there will not be any more downtime after this big break like imagine we could go straight from wano boom jump into Elbaf and then Elbaf could lead into something else kind of like what happened with Water 7 and Eni's Lobby where it was just like one event after the other leading into Impel Down and whatnot that very well could be the case and yeah a lot can get done if Oda decides to do it at a little bit of a quicker pace not necessarily that it's going to be astronomically fast on some like I don't know Black Clover or anything like that but I think we could get to Elbaf he could if he wants to decide to make it only like a 30 or so 40 maybe a chapter type of thing even shorter than that he can make it like kind a Zoe in a way I get it that there's been a lot of build up and set up but what if they get to Elbaf and there's no reason really to be there for that long because there's not many people there or it leads into again they're there at Elbaf they gotta go somewhere else now because of XYZ reasons and that kind of just solves like hey we got to Elbaf we saw the Giants we saw that it's weird like yeah and it, it's just kind of crazy that the realization that the series that I've been following for a bajillion freaking years now is actually coming to an end it's been announced like again we've heard so many times like you know oh I'm gonna give it this amount of time that amount of time this is the first time we got a big break that says no we're entering the final act final chapter so I'm, I'm happy for oda i'm gonna be honest with you and i know probably not many people are this isn't gonna be their first thought that they jump out to i'm really happy for oda that this task that he has had on his shoulders for a long time by all of the higher up from shueisha showing a jump etc etc of making one piece is almost coming to an end his journey of working and enslaving himself damn near for this story is finally you know counting down to the ending and thank god oda Oda deserves as a human being to be happy and live a normal life. So I'm happy for Oda. I'm happy that the fans are going to potentially see conclusion rather sooner than later. And in general, I'm really excited to get most of the answers. I don't think we'll get all the answers. I'm going to be honest with you. I think there's going to be a few at the very least plot threads that are going to be left around there for two piece or one piece and a half, whatever it's going to be, the inevitable Luffy son or grandchild or whatever. That's going to need legs to kind of grow into its own thing. And how do you do that? You leave a few plot threads that maybe they are not the most important maybe it's like we see vegapunk but we really don't dive into him as much as people would like because it's going to get full-on addressed in a sequel that is going to happen because there's just too much freaking money in it but again i'm curious do you think that one piece is going to be here for three more years four more years five more years also would you be cool with it going monthly if it did as long as it's still going to keep on like it's going to end in three months but it's just more impactful now and do you think that's going to help out the series like what's your whole stance on it then something that i wanted to address because i find it to 
be a very big deal not just for anime and manga but people in general because one of the big things of why I kind of was just like man anime expo I don't know what the heck is going on over there is because for the longest time they're talking about like yo you need to be vaccinated blah 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 not that I'm anti-vax or pro-vax I'm just saying that it's just been one thing after another because now we got this big information that anime expo 2022 no longer requires proof of COVID-19 vaccination or negative tests so if you were one of the people that I'm sure there were people that did it of hey yo anime expo is telling us that we need to be vaccinated to go inside there and you got vaccinated for anime expo first of all if you were going to get vaccinated you should have did it to protect your family or for yourself or you know just whatever the case may be not hey i want to go to an anime convention but if you did get the jab for the expo they said hey yeah, no nah, don't worry about it fam just come through which considering the fact that we're not officially announced out of the pandemic i wonder how that's gonna go like if you know shit starts flying everywhere uh, are anime expo gonna be held liable for it considering the fact that you're pushing this that nobody needs to be vaccinated now it, and it's kind of crazy because if i'm not mistaken anime expo again la like la has been very heavy with all of that stuff so to see that they're like eh, come through now i'm like well whenever you guys invite me as a guest and whatnot for where i deserve to be i'll be there until then i think i'm good i think i'm right. and again i want to stress that that is not pro or against vaccinations because people take that any which way that they want to i'm just saying that there's too much back and forth about it and i'm not all that interested at the moment right now of going anyway unless they're gonna bring me out there unless they're gonna put me in my rightful spot as being like a guest or something and that's not being cocky that's just it is what it is know your worth fam while we're on the topic of anime expo let's run through a few different things for starters there's going to be some premieres that are going to be going down at anime expo it says here crunchyroll licenses reveals anime expo premieres for my hero academia season 5's ova shine on bakumatsu bad boys smile of arse notoria anime crunchyroll announced on tuesday that it has licensed the following anime and will premiere them at this year's anime expo event several anime will have world premieres debuting before the japanese release the newly licensed anime and their premiere dates at anime expo include my hero season 5's ova VAs, which that's the one that we talked about that it's pretty much like damn near movies because they're putting them in theaters over there so they'll be in theaters over there in japan but if you want to see it over here it'll be at anime expo and i keep it a buck with you i'm not enthusiastic about it i don't really care because it's first of all attached to it's the season five ovas and i ain't gonna lie i'm sorry with the season five just it is what it is I, I i'm so disappointed with what they did with season five let's just go to season six already please then like i said shine on bakumatsu bad boys smile of arse notoria and then one that I know a lot of you guys or a couple that I know a lot of you guys are going to be excited about is apparently they're doing a big premiere of Classroom of the Elite Season 2 July 3rd and the first episode of Blue Lock will also premiere July 2nd over there as well and that's pretty freaking awesome honestly it's like if I was going for Anime Expo I guess I, I probably Blue Lock would be the one that I would really want to go see I mean the My Hero OVAs you know give or take maybe it'd be fun to watch with some friends or whatever but they're OVAs and you know even the movies half the time you know you don't know what you're going to get but OVAs is like eh and one more thing regarding Anime Expo. Apparently, Chainsaw Man's anime panel has been announced for Anime Expo by Crunchyroll on July 4th. Now, let me calm down because I'm not even gonna lie. When I first heard that, I was like, oh my god, let's go! But then I was thinking, well, what are they gonna do here? What are they gonna announce? It's not like it's saying that they're gonna premiere episode one or anything like that. Because if they were premiering episode one, that would be the big reason for me personally to say, oh no, 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 I gotta go to Anime Expo. Like, if they're premiering the Chainsaw Man anime there, now nah, I gotta go there. But it's not saying that. So, I'm guessing either potentially we could get a new trailer trailer with a new piece of animation or more than likely they're probably gonna replay that same fucking trailer that they've been playing for like a year plus now probably announce the english dub voice actors via that trailer and say hey we have it which we already know that i'm guessing that that's what it's going to be maybe it could be something better than that i hope it'd be something better than that like yo you got the whole world by storm at that point you're at anime expo it's july put out a new trailer for chainsaw man show us what the actual anime is gonna look like because in case you don't know the trailer that we've seen of chainsaw man a hundred thousand times that's a pre-render that wasn't like they're knee deep in production or anything like that that was hey here's this budget which if i'm not mistaken it was like a disgustingly two dollar really fucking horrible budget but hey here's this budget make this trailer right now that's all we need you to do don't make the anime nothing just make a beautiful trailer and that's what we got and i'm hoping that when we get the full-on okay here's the real anime that it looks just as good if not better because the 3d cg has me so freaking worried for chainsaw man in particular for when denji turns into chainsaw man that's what has me a little bit worried worried unless uh, i don't know we gotta see but yeah there's gonna be a chainsaw man thing there at anime expo am i excited <sighs> considering it's not talking about anything new and if it's a trailer or something or if it's like dub announcements like dog i could catch that a 
the crib. What am I going to go all the way over there for that? Like, if I'm going to go to LA, I'm going to go, which I am going to be in LA soon. I'm going to go for like big and important reasons to me. Not that that's not important in general, because to some people that is important to them. For me, either it's like, yo, y'all going to fly me out for, or I'm going to go out there as a guest, or I got other business to handle that I'll be over there for anyways. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. So yeah, just to pin the whole anime expo, all the announcements and stuff like that. Like, yeah. Then it's been a good minute since I heard of these creators and what they've been up to in case you don't know. Matter of fact, let me tell you something. Whenever people ask me to recommend an anime that like anybody could watch or something like that, for whatever reason, this one is the one that immediately pops in my mind. Now, mind you, I might change my answer because some people are going to be like, really? Uh, but it's always the one that pops into my mind because one, I love the manga. The manga is godlike. And two, the anime was a really dope experience despite the fact that it didn't finish the story and it went into a little bit of filler. But I really loved it. And I'm talking about Dead Dog man wandarando dead man wonderland in case you don't know the creators of dead man wonderland they tried their hand a few years back i want to say it was like maybe 2015 they tried to come with smoking parade or smoke parade something like that it didn't take off for whatever reason i think around that time fire force started and stuff like that so like other series were stealing the spotlight so to speak but they tried their hand at coming back after dead man wonderland with that one uh recently they wrapped up i want to say maybe within the last year or so it came to a close we talked about it here on forever news and then now it says dead man wonderland creators jensei kata Taoka and Kazuma Kondo will start a new Kyoto set battle action manga series titled Retropolis Scratch in Besatsu Shonen Magazine 8 out July 7th 2022 and it is real interesting to see that they're going to Besatsu now I can't remember if their previous works were in Besatsu Shonen Magazine but I say all that to say that Attack on Titan leaving that magazine has left a blow like they came immediately and they were like yo get that uh, Shinobu Otaka woman that was actually serialized in Shogakugan which in case you don't know who Shinobu Otaka that's the author of Magi Magi the Labyrinth of Magic very amazing story they brought her into Besatsu then they were like yo that's not enough because her new series is tanking Orient they were like okay Let's get the creators of Dead Man Wonderland. And that's what we got here with this one. Whatever it is, I'm not even going to lie. A battle action series, I'm down for it. Dead Man Wonderland was fire. Oh my God. And Smoke Parade, I remember I read like the first chapter or two. It was shocking as hell and crazy. I hope that with this one, they get another hit. Because Dead Man Wonderland was so freaking amazing. I loved it. Especially the manga, the Wretched Egg, Ganta Igarashi. Like, I'm ready for more from this duo. They, they make some great stuff. And hopefully this time around, they could get a hit. Because Dead Man Wonderland was fire. Smoke Parade, kind of tense. Let's see what happens here. And in some more good news, because, you know, it was a little bit of doom and gloom in One Piece. We got a little more updates on One Piece film Red. And I'm not even going to lie. I'm mad excited for this film now. Like, of everything out there, like, I actually started warming up to Dragon Ball Super Superhero. This isn't to, you know, appease anybody. Y'all know I stand on my shit when I stand on it. I'm, I'm not a fan of 3D or whatnot. But there's something about me understanding where they're taking the Dragon Ball franchise moving forward that I'm not too against anymore. Maybe in a different video I'll talk about it. But the reason I brought that up is because it's between that and One Piece Film Red of like the films coming out that I'd be excited for and I'm way more still excited for Film Red but here we got a new trailer and it says here One Piece Film Red anime reveals trailer, cast, theme song, Uta project and a poster by Oda a live stream event for the upcoming One Piece Film Red anime revealed on Wednesday a new trailer, two cast members, film's theme song artist, the Uta project and a new poster visual drawn by creator Eiichiro Oda and I loved how because I checked out the trailer in the trailer it was fire to see that Luffy already knew about about Uta. He, he was like, oh yeah, that's because this is Shanks' daughter and the whole crowd went crazy and it's like, has Luffy known this all along? Also, please, can we make Uta canon if that's the case? Come on, dog. If that's Shanks' daughter, she needs to be canon. This is important. So, I really, really hope that they treat this canonical and we could even possibly see her in the manga. Like, yes, please. And the poster that Oda drew of Shanks, Luffy, and Uta One Piece Film Red, A6. I'm not even gonna lie, this is freaking amazing. Like, this film, I think it's gonna be better than Stampede. I don't know. I got a strong suspicion that they recognize that some fans weren't big fans of Stampede. I like Stampede, but um, I'm, I'm hoping that this really takes it back to Film Z. Film Z was the best One Piece film thus far. I want more of that feel, and it could be, especially you got Shanks involved. And also, once again, I got to stress, Shanks better be in this movie more than like five-minute cameos once in a blue. Like, I really want, if that's Shanks' daughter, this is Film Red, Shanks, baby. We, he better be like mad relevant, not just, hey, I'm here. And also, based on some leaks that have come out, little trailer 
trailers and whatnot, Luffy and Shanks' daughter were apparently childhood friends. And there's a little clip right here, a little picture I see of Luffy. And I think this is from trailer as a child next to Uta as a child. So Luffy's known about her for a long time. Again, this needs to be canon. Like unless this is a fever dream, a dream sequence film or something like that, please. This is, this is awesome. It would also explain a few things of the relationship between Luffy and Shanks as well. Considering like if Shanks has a daughter, like, yeah. Although I guess you'd argue why he never mentioned his daughter if all this time, like clearly this has been added after the fact, but still a cool idea and I'm, I'm here for it. I can't wait for this next One Piece movie. Let's throw this one in the rumor pile. We got actually two that we're going to throw in the rumor pile. This one is probably more substantial than the other one, but it says here, Trigun is getting a new anime adaptation. An official announcement and more info will be coming very soon. And I saw this post had like 11,000 likes. Now, granted, it could very well be, well, 11 at the time I saw this. Uh, it could very well be that, hey, um, you know, it just, uh, uh, some guy named Chris said this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like some guy named Chris on the internet decided Trigun's getting a new anime or it could actually be that this is just like these leakers that get this information and I'm gonna be honest with you like I would be a hypocrite to say that A I don't want it to return the old anime is fine considering the fact that I would love a Yu Yu Hakusho anime and Yu Yu Hakusho's anime is also fine but Trigun I don't know I guess I'm gonna have to wait and see if they do it right also is it based off source material or was Trigun an anime original because if it's based off source material then this means that we could get a more faithful adaptation I'd imagine because I don't know I don't think Trigun adapted whatever it did back in the days they weren't concerned about we gotta adapt all the source material they would just like make an anime that's gonna make money and move on to the next shit like you might not even get a season two so again keep this one with a grain of salt for now but a trigon anime with today's animation doesn't sound that bad either like i love trigon like i i have somewhere i had to take it apart because it started to get messed up but a giant freaking vash the stampede statue it's like a huge freaking statue probably seen in some of my older videos a few years back but yeah i rock with trigon so we'll see what happens if this is good it'll be great because trigon itself was freaking awesome although i don't know man they could botch it at the same time hopefully it's not like, like one of those netflix things like jojo's bizarre adventure fans we're still waiting for stone ocean after only getting a little batch like i'm not digging that it's starting to be like oh my god just give it already and as i stated about another rumor pile related thing uh this has been back and forth i don't know if this is like the company that they're just pushing this to keep the thing relevant because every other month it's like hey official announcement guys solo leveling is getting anime like i reported on this at least two or three times by now about solo leveling getting an anime and once again it's making its rounds solo leveling will be getting an anime adaptation aniplex x crunchyroll studio a1 pictures and the announcement should be next month july and again we've been hearing this for a long time i don't even know has there actually been an official solo leveling anime announcement or are they yanking our chain part of me feels like because the manhua webtoon ended they are using this as a tactic to keep it alive like every few months hey did you know that solo leveling is getting an anime hey it's breaking news so we fucking know already it's getting an anime or not whatever but yeah people <laughs> another one for the rumor pile solo leveling getting an a1 pictures and i ain't gonna lie a1 pictures would be fire considering like if you watch sword art online or magi the labyrinth the magic a1 pictures they know how to put their foot into it for art and animation quality okay next people in case you don't know vinland saga season two has a new trailer that is out i will have some of the visuals here so you guys can see it on the screen and i ain't even gonna lie it, it freaking looks fire but in a different light because keeping it real a lot of what fans warned about like it's about farms and stuff like that was very prevalent in the trailer a lot of new faces in the trailer I, i'm not familiar with like you see thorfinn in there and then you see it looks like thorfinn older and a couple of other characters but for the most part it's like a lot of new faces uh art and animation definitely standing up so that's a really good thing it's holding up right there but the thing that i took away from it that i thought was fire was the philosophies and the poetry of it like it looks like this is going to get really deep and complex um in a different light like it's not going to rely on battles which don't get me wrong villain saga season one i called it a classic already like that is a modern day classic anime and the action definitely helped support that but i think that this is going to be the biggest test of fandom of hey if it's not going to be battle action heavy right with this upcoming season it's going to be more so farm life and really just thorfinn understanding himself and who he is and what he wants to be uh i think it could still be great i'm not gonna be holding against it like you better have more action like oscar lot and everything that went down in season one was more than enough for me to say okay we're going in a different direction let's see where it goes i, I love vinland saga and i think that they're gonna get it done and i'm just so glad that studio mappa based off this trailer it looks like they're not shitting it around it looks like they're really giving it the works that vinland saga deserves because season one oh my god okay people and let's close off this episode with the weekly shonen magazine author comments courtesy of jose underscore ke starting off with george morikawa from hajime no ipo he said i listened as my friend got up on a soapbox interesting i wonder if he was talking about me with me defending him last time nah. <laughs> these author comments are written way before i had there's no way in hell but um 
Cool beans. Then we got the new manga Kanan Sama by Nonko. I've dreamed about writing something in this comment box since I was a child, but I have no idea what to talk about now that I am here. That's weird. Like, why why are a lot of these authors now say that? Even in Weekly Shonen Jump, I wonder if there's something behind it, like a marketing reason of hey, we don't want to get typecast as the author that swings this way on the political spectrum or thinks this way. So until we find out what your fan base is, you got no comments could very well be the case it could be that they're not necessarily being held back on what to say but it's like hey how about you shut the hell up until we figure out where your fandom lies then we got negi haruba author of uh ranger reject um what the hell h k j k l as written for me by my daughter oh okay that, that's cute i'm not even gonna lie like i don't know you probably can't see it right now but over here i got a picture that my daughter drew right over here on the wall then we got nakama suzuki author of four nights of the apocalypse seven deadly sin every so often i buy mini cars i find interesting my collection is building up little by little okay you flex it on them with that you buying a, a car collection we see you fam we know you got the bag and we respect it ken wakui author of tokyo revengers i just now started playing pokemon go it makes walking so much fun i think i'm gonna try that because like i go on walks and shit like that that would be so fun to like yo look it's a, a bulbasaur personally i prefer charmander though i'm just saying k urana author of the new breakout hit for weekly shonen magazine gachi aquata i spend my days constantly saying to myself who's the one that came up with this pain in the ass character design oh it was me that reminds me of masashi kishimoto when he was sick of drawing naruto with the goggles very early on at that and switched to like naruto with the headband and naruto like do what you gotta do fam Hiro Mashima, author of Fairy Tale and Eden Zero. I beat Haruyukite Retro Tika, the trick and imagery with top notch beating video games. It never stops with this man. Manga, movies, all legend. And we're gonna wrap this bad boy up with Yoshitoki Oima from To Your Eternity. I will go to Costco at least once, even if it kills me. Did they give you the bag to say that or like what's going on here? How would you feel if I told you right now that a very important animator is complaining that his heart is gonna give out? How would you feel if I told you this is how Doc? and critical it's getting with these animators regardless of position at that because you would think like yo okay maybe it's the lower tier ones that they're grinding and they're not used to the grind they don't understand it what if i told you that somebody that is kind of closer to the top is also going through that same situation that we've been talking about time and time again of these animators that are being damn near enslaved in creating animation for us over there in japan whether it be studio mappa whatever the case may be like this right here you're gonna be like again but but even worse this time this is really freaking bad y'all know we've talked about it we've seen the director of the attack on titan anime with like literally giant chunks of bags hanging under his eyes from being so damn tired of the work ethic that they have over there that is i i, I feel kind of dirty calling it work ethic because it's literally like damn near personal enslavement because at the end of the day absolutely none of these people are at gunpoint like yo you better draw this shit right but ultimately this is their dreams and these companies are giving them this opportunity so they're going really hard but it's like like, yo fam you gotta be considerate you have to be like yo hey do you want to do this hey do you not want to do this hey how can i help you when it comes to your employees you cannot be doing this to them recently came across a post that honestly almost damn near broke my heart when i read it i couldn't even believe it it's by an animator known as ryu nakayama and you're probably thinking okay uh who is he what has he worked on well based on his bio it says he's the animation director for chainsaw man the director for Jujutsu Kaisen number 19, Eve Ryzen Detra MV, I'm not sure about what is that, a Shield Hero episode 16, and he's done a bunch of like opening and endings, various ones from, I'm guessing that's also referring to Shield Hero. Uh, so he's done a lot of work, but in particular, he's the animation director for the Chainsaw Man anime. And you're like, okay, that, that that's his role, cool. Well, what's happening, Fenev? What's going on here? Why should we care? What is it this time? Well, first of all, the reason I wanted to point out that he is the director is that this problem with the anime and manga industry but in particular the anime industry goes so much deeper than just like oh you know it's uh you know a few low tier animators that are struggling and stuff like that they ain't getting paid that's why they speaking out this dude is the director of the chainsaw man anime the anime that they've been working on tirelessly and relentlessly over there at studio mappa the same anime that <laughs> could be one of the inspirations for why they decided to open up that giant compound of a studio where people are just pretty much living in there and creating animation inside the studio like that's how serious it got well this animator pretty much is complaining about his heart i feel that my
my body isn't following my spiritual motivation. I'm about to run out of the energy drinks I received in such a large amount. I'm too tired, so I want to reset somewhere. And somebody replied to him about that, and he said, the game is important. If you don't do it, your heart will die. Like, dog, if you're talking about basically, hey, if I don't relax, if I don't get something rest, if I don't stop what I'm doing right now, my heart's going to die. That is beyond ridiculously bad. This should not be going on. If he's complaining on a public platform, like, at the very least, you can say, okay, if he's complaining on a public platform, and a lot of these animators are constantly complaining on a, a public platform, ultimately, this is where the company should take a look like, hmm, maybe we should give him a break. Hmm, maybe we should give him a super duper raise and uh, cut a few hours off just so that he could get, you know, back on track and stuff like that, and we could really show him that we love and care and appreciate what he's doing, animating, you know, being the director for Chainsaw Man anime, the probably what might be the biggest anime of the last, I don't know how many years now, once it launches, like, I mean, on one hand, I'm sure there's gonna be a few people that are gonna be like, oh, well, this is good news that at the very least, we know that they're working relentlessly, right? But that that's disgusting because I've seen some people that will throw that argument, like with the Attack on Titan director when he came out and he had those giant bags under his eyes and was complaining about how exhausted he was and everything. People, oh, you know, this and that, hey, at least we're getting good animation, stop. No, because God forbid if something happens to this gentleman, I'm not sure how old he is or whatnot, but if something happens to this gentleman to the point that he's pumping energy drinks just to stay alive and saying that his heart will die if he doesn't get arrested and shit like that. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that BS of excusing it, blah, 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 in the sake of capitalism. Like, don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm anti-capitalist or anti-the establishment per se, but I, I, nah, when it comes to this, this is wrong. This is abuse and this is not right. To be honest, this isn't even about pay at this point. This is just about treating people like decent human beings. Worry about your employees. Like with me, with people that I work with and whatnot, people that work for me, I'm always very conscious of, no, I got to make sure dudes is I. I got to make sure people is good. Like, I don't even know how these big companies operate in this fashion of like being okay with it and thinking that, eh, we'll throw out another press release. Like, uh, kudos to this guy that he's gotten this far because this could probably cause a little bit of a stink and this could definitely in Japan, like they, you know, the whole saying of the nail that sticks out gets hammered in. This could get him fired realistically. If they feel a certain way about this, this could get him thrown the hell out. And I hope not because I'm imagining he's doing all of this because it's his dream. Dog, you're the animation director for Chainsaw Man. I can't stress enough. Just even saying that sounds so freaking amazing. And that's probably what pushes these people to go through this relentless work ethic. But either way, I felt that it was important that I brought this to you guys' attention. That despite the fact that, yeah, they're unionizing. Yeah, they're starting to make some slow progressive changes over there in Japan. We are so far away from them being just treated like human beings when it comes to the animators and whatnot. It's sick and I also want to say that when Chainsaw Man anime comes anything pretty much from Studio Mappa at this point you have to also you know when you're talking about certain stuff try and be a little more mindful realize that there's people like this gentleman right here that are damn near killing themselves for your entertainment please just try and keep that in mind I'm not saying that you can't be critical I'm not saying you can't analyze and be critical about works that are presented in front of you I'm just saying remember that there's a real life human being slaving over this shit for months and months and months and your one comment can really fuck them up and even with me saying all of that there's still going to be people that have no empathy or sympathy for what i've just said and that's just sad and i'm speaking from knowing because i've seen time and time again in my comment section while there'll be a lot of outpour of support for these people there will be the occasional asshole to that just don't care but until we get to that point where um we're not dealing with this situation anymore i wanted to inform you animators are still suffering out there in japan moving forward though we got a little bit of insight into the upcoming one piece film red movie honestly that is the one film of the year that i am dying for and we don't really got any official updates on when it's going to come to the west but it says here one piece the movie ticket for one piece film red can already be purchased for its theatrical release so if you want to get your tickets if you're going to japan or whatever and it's scheduled for release in august in japan and this is what you get with it this image of i want to say again that's supposedly shanks's daughter that's luffy that's shanks it's really really dope and it's honestly they figured out a way to yet again when it comes to one piece push another film with shanks like just showing shanks even though god knows how much we're really gonna see it's really really dope and also it's interesting japan is like okay boom we're gonna put out one piece in japan in August and then if I'm not mistaken we just spoke about it in the last episode of Forever News they're gonna put out Dragon Ball Super's movie in the West uh, in August so they're gonna have like a double dip and I'm guessing this is probably an experiment on their behalf of well what happens if we put out a film simultaneously we got one rocking in Japan one rocking in the West at the same time but yeah really really dope image I can't wait for this one I've said it many times this is the one that I'm excited for this is the Toei animation movie that I'm really looking forward to even though yo Toei <laughs> yeah I've been wild in 2022 I don't know Toei did, came into this year like we want violence lad we want all the smoke mate and if i'm being honest with you i don't want none of the smoke dog like
like you could keep that shit i quit smoking ages ago fam that shit is ugh. next up i am very very excited to talk about this one because whatever can come from anything when it comes to this franchise is always a smile on my face i'm gonna be honest with you and if you don't know what i'm talking about i'm referring to a little show by a small creator you may have heard of him he recently made a little update on twitter somewhere there i don't know if anybody's seen it his name is yoshihiro tagashi he did another series called uh what is it again uh hiatus hiatus no hunter hunter uh, hunter X, or hunter hunter i think yeah like he, he did that one but he did one before that um <laughs> yu yu haka show right <laughs> Dude, Yu Yu Hakusho. Yeah, I know I love Yu Yu Hakusho. Well, we got a little bit of an update and I'm very excited to see what the hell is about to happen because it says here, Yu Yu Hakusho anime posts special logo for its 30th anniversary project. So we got a project. The TV anime adaptation of Yoshihiro Tagashi's supernatural manga that is absolutely great and one of the greatest shonen of all time. Yu Yu Hakusho. Okay, they didn't say that. That was me adding that. You know, I, I do what I do. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho started airing in Japan in October 1992. To celebrate its 30th anniversary, the anime's official Official Twitter posted a special logo featuring the protagonist Yusuke Yurameshi. According to the post, a memorial illustration will also be revealed at 6 JST and 2 PT on June 10th. And the logo is just like a Yusuke with a 30 in back of it. And it says, produced by Studio Piro, the TV anime was aired for 112 episodes from October 1992 to January 95. And during the airing period, the two feature films were released in summers of 93 and 94. Yu Yu Hakusho, the movie, and the Poltergeist Report. Its stage play adaptation were performed in 2019. 2020 and a live action drama adaptation has been in the works for streaming on Netflix in December 2023. On the occasion of its 25th anniversary in 2018, two new anime episodes, Two Shot and All or Nothing, were produced to be included in the TV anime's fourth Blu ray box. Stay tuned to see what will be coming with its 30th anniversary project. And then we got this image right here an anime key visual. And please, for the love of God, please, 30th anniversary, bring back Yu Yu Hakusho, remake it with today's art and animation the highest possible. Like, hands down, especially. In the era we are now if there was ever a time whoever's watching this trust me if there was ever a time that could make a freaking breakout oh my god this is the hugest thing in the world anime is a yu yu Hakusho remake the same way they did hunter hunter and what they did for hunter hunter for the love of god please for the love of god please bring back yu yu Hakusho. do a remake and have tagashi just yo come on man do what toriyama does he gets a napkin he starts writing some shit on there hands it over and they make 130 episodes of an anime please for the love of god do that like you you Hakusho fans like myself i will buy the box sets i will buy the blu-rays i will buy the 4ks i will go to the movies i will buy the plush whatever it takes i love this series yusuke yurameshi hiei karama and kuwabara if you don't know about you you Hakusho, and i didn't sell you with my enthusiasm right here get the fuck out of my video <laughs> I know, you're probably like, yo, Fenev, that was violent. I'm just saying, you should be, why, why are you cheating yourself out of an experience? And I'm in the middle of Fenev News gushing over Haka show, but yeah, now, what could come from this outside of that? Well, obviously, they got the live action series that's coming, boom. Netflix is probably gonna do a big release, because I think they had it in other regions. They had Yu Yu show. They're probably gonna get the rights to Yu Yu Hakusho's anime if they probably don't already have it, and they're just waiting to release it when the live action comes, or a little bit before to coincide and whatnot. So, there's a couple of things there. I just hope that they're not, like, yeah, in honor of the 30th anniversary, that's what we're doing with this live action, dog. I, 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 I don't want it. <laughs> like, I'm going to be open-minded. Maybe it could be cool. But for me, realistically speaking, Yu Yu Hakusho's live action, there's probably no way it's going to be able to impress me. Like, Yu Yu Hakusho is so important to me. It helped me in so many ways in my life. In dark times, Yu Yu Hakusho was there for me that I couldn't see myself. Like, I, I, I got to keep it real. I will probably be one of those people that it's too hard for me to be impressed by it. But rather than go the direction of just straight up slamming it before it's even released i'm gonna just say straight up like i doubt i'm gonna like it i doubt it's gonna be to my expectations because yu yu haka show is just too important to me but yeah let me know what do you think is gonna happen for the 30th anniversary a remake are they just gonna push the live action is here wahoo or there's gonna be something else oh my god a yu yu haka show remake with a video game to boot please at the same time maybe who knows it might give yoshihiro tagashi a break from his hunter hunter break <laughs> And he could come back and write some more Hakusho, like a movie or something after the fact, or Hakusho Z, where he writes on a napkin a few ideas and they have a monthly Hakusho manga where Yusuke is just shitting on all the next gen characters. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna relax now. We're moving on. Because now we got the weekly Shonen Magazine author comments! Courtesy of Jose underscore Ke. And we're gonna start off with, for whatever reason, the art on this one looked really interesting. And I don't know if this is a new work. And it's Kanan-sama by Nonko. Hello, I'm Nonko. I'll repay the kindness of allowing 
allowing me to dirty this fine magazine with my presence with the best art possible before being thrown out. Jeez, holy shit. <laughs> Yo, talking about being canceled off rip. Like, I don't know if this author is trying to just be funny and edgy, but that was amazing. Okay, Nonko, you caught my interest. I got you. Then we got Ken Wakui from Tokyo Revengers. My oldest son is hooked on Nyanko Daisenso, while my second son is hooked on Yokai Watch Puni Puni. Yeah, I like the the the, the Poo Tang too. No. <laughs> Shout out to Ken Wakui, Tokyo Red. That's so dope, dog. Former gangster turned mangaka and seemingly awesome parent. Cool shit. By the way, people, in case you ain't subscribed and hit that bell, now would be a good time to do so. I'm just saying, dog. Then we got Hiro Mashima, author of Eden Zero. Now that I've had more opportunities to use them recently, I've realized Twitter spaces are a great way to have fun with others who are on them. And in case you don't know, and I'll try to link it in the description below, Hiro Mashima opened up his own YouTube channel. So he's on spaces on Twitter. He's opening up YouTube channels. Praise this man! Writing videos. Video game, multiple mangas, working on anime adaptations. This is why I created the Feneververse that you should be subscribed to everything there. Fenev always wins. My podcast with my bros. We created a podcast and couldn't come up with a name, so we settled on this sentence being the title. Yeah, that's legit the name of our podcast. Feneva the FI1. I do pickups and discussions. I got the whole Feneverse. Hiro Mashima got the Mashima verse. I got the Feneverse. Okay, the Feneverse, the, the world verse, whatever you want to call it, dog. Bravo. Then we got George Morikawa, author of Hajime no Ippo. Akihabara has become a foreign city to me now. That's interesting. I wonder if he's saying that like because he moved recently and that was initially his hometown. Because usually people say that, right? Like, it's so weird. My hometown feels foreign now because, you know, I moved and I've been away for so long. Either way, shout out to George Morikawa. And if you missed the previous episode of Forever News with that asshole that was talking down on him in favor of Tagashi, like, shout out to Tagashi, but I'm always going to support George Morikawa. Like, yo, Hajime no Ippo made me go and buy a whole bunch of boxes boxing equipment that I occasionally use admittedly but it's a freaking inspirational story inspirational series and leave George Morikawa the fuck alone and we got Kei Urana Gachi Akuta they said one of my staff's cousins came over and said so you guys draw poop before running off apparently sorry about that what the heck you guys draw poop like what's been happening in Gachi Akuta lately another series that Fenev is behind on what's happening to Fenev World oh no <laughs> I'm like behind on everything lately holy shit this is this is bad lad bad lad that sounds like a good name for a manga like blood lad but bad lad and i'm not gonna give you the premise that i just thought off in my head because you ain't gonna rob my idea dog enough of that there's too many copycats as it is then we got nagi haruba author of ranger reject eating a hamburger i ordered on a veranda sure hits different wow why is he talking like yo it hits different on a veranda yo dog so you just chilling on a veranda relaxing max i like that man i ain't gonna lie i would love that dog like imagine me getting a break like a legit break not like hey i'm, I'm suffering tragedy i'm depressed like an actual break and the algorithm gods don't destroy my livelihood who who or another career that takes me off of youtube's algorithm oh we can't talk about that stuff because then it's like oh no then we got Nakama Suzuki, author of Four Nights of the Apocalypse, Seven Deadly Sins, a true living legend, still playing Dying Light 2. That's crazy. I was playing, was it Dying Light 1 the other day with my daughter? Like craziness. Shout outs to him. We love you. We support you. We respect you. Between Nakama Suzuki and Hiro Mashima, there will be no slander on our watch. Not on my watch! And then we're going to close this off with Yoshitoki Oima, To Your Eternity. I have a serious cream soda addiction. I've never liked cream soda and addiction is not good. Seek help. No, I'm just playing, but seriously, like, seek help. Don't, don't, don't get addicted to no soda. Like, I've actually almost completely cut out soda. Like, I have a soda once in a blue because, like, hey, let me quench that thirst. But cutting out soda has been one of the best changes of my life. And yeah, people, those were the weekly Shonen Magazine author comments. As always, a treat. Then, just quickly, I want to take a look at a little bit of sales. We're not going to go too heavy into it, but we got the weekly Oricon for what was the last releases of manga, which were the latest My Hero volume, Marshall, and Undead Unluck. And we got the performance of them. And I'm not going to lie, in four weeks, because pretty much now we're going to the next volumes that were released for June. These were the May volumes. None of these series did very well. There was some shorty the other day over on Twitter that was trying to tell me, you know, me, that I do this for a living every day. Oh, no, you know, everything is up in manga and anime. Everyone talks about it. It's all, you know, it's all. And I look at this and I'm like, dog. <laughs> like, for example, the newbie Marshall. Like, you know, my hero, th those are amazing sales still, regardless. May it might be lower than the last one. I think the last one was like at 750 by this point, whatever. Like, it's it's 
still, those are great sales. But Marshall in four weeks finally breaks a hundred thousand. I remember legit just one year ago, Marshall was doing about ninety to a hundred in a week, and it was like five days half the time. So definitely a decline on there. But then Undead Unluck, I keep it a bug. I remember Undead Unluck was doing forty to fifty week one. It is doing thirty one in four weeks. The newbies, honestly, I I want to say even this one, and I'm, I'm I gotta be honest here. Post Chainsaw Man and Jujutsu Kaisen era, everything from Shonen Jump after the fact has not really panned out too well. Like Marshall, I think it's still going to go on to be a hit. Undead Unluck, I don't know. That, that could end up being a siren situation, if I'm being honest. I could see that going the way of Siren. It lasted a long time and still never got an anime. Hell, if you watch my Nakula Suzuki 7 Deadly Sins video, like, yo, he went through 16 serializations, one of which went for 130 chapters, never got an anime, and got canceled. So, I say all that to say that even that generation, because, you know, I talk about the previous, like, 2022, all the serializations that came out, came, you know, came and went, Ayashimon, Red Hood, like, all of those came and went, but even that generation, and started to dip you could argue that they're taking too long to get an anime adaptation and maybe they're even experimenting to see how long a manga could go and how sales could go without an anime adaptation but Marshall that'll fly with an anime undead I'm uncertain about that one but yeah I just quickly wanted to touch up on that I felt it was kind of important to do so that yo the, even that generation I don't know it's like post chainsaw man things just have not been rocking for whatever freaking reason and I think to a certain degree maybe jump has a hold over what they're trying to do I'm sure they got a plan they're a conglomerate but mm, it's weird then quickly despite all of the hibbity hoopla we finally got a release date for the anime that i probably won't watch just keeping it real but it was a big jump title for a while ayakashi triangle anime scheduled for 2023 so pretty much the ayakashi triangle anime is coming in 2023 and it's crazy because that's been a controversial series for starters the, the person that created it has already had a very colorful past but then on top of that you know this series that just recently got removed from the magazine there was a controversy about some of the imagery that it was being censored in the west then they put it in jump plus like it's been a whole bunch of stuff going on i think jump is done publishing it if i'm not mistaken i think they actually got picked up by another publisher altogether yeah now it's coming 2023 uh let me know like i'm curious how many ayakashi triangle fans are out there that are actually waiting for this one i'm not i'm keeping it real probably won't watch it but i'm curious and this was a story that i found really really interesting apparently japan has set the new record for the fastest internet out there researchers in japan have set a new record by achieving internet speed of 1 million gigabytes per second. The Network Research Institute at NICT reported on May 30th that they have successfully demonstrated the world's first transmission speed of 1.02 petabit per second. One petabit is equivalent to 1 million gigabytes GB. The new record could usher in new home internet speeds that are 100,000 times faster than any of the current fastest services on the market. With this power, one petabit per second would mean 10 million channels of 8k broadcasting per second making live coverage easily achievable from all corners of the world with virtually no lapse the good news is this record was set using ordinary optic fiber cable meaning its technology is potentially available for immediate and wide use that is that's going to be a game changer oh my god just hearing that right now makes me think like yo get prepared content creators Think about how you can use that knowledge that you just watched this from me, by the way. You know, subscribe, hit that bell for never news. I got you covered. Use that and apply it to whatever you're planning on doing. Like if you know now, okay, internet is going to be a lot faster. How can you use that to your advantage? I'm giving you game right there. Hope you get something from it. But yeah, that's all I have for this one. I'm for Neverworld. And as always, people have an awesome day. And remember the golden rule. Anime and manga for life, boy. Have an awesome day. Peace. And you guys just watch this. Another episode of Forever News. Have an awesome day. Subscribe and hit that bell, lads. And I mean, like, subscribe and hit that bell faster than the fastest internet. Like that pedapita, whatever the fuck bit. Like, yeah. <laughs>